who had the question at table 20. There's a microphone behind you. Hi, um, uh, Wayne Jacob from Wikino Nation. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Chief Bob Chamberlain for taking my uh, question away from me. I have uh, another one, though. I had a backup. Um, their planning process as it exists now is kind of driven in part, at least, by people's interest in mainly government policies like, like uh, you know, the restricted areas in the North Coast for agriculture and things like that. Um, I'm wondering how the process, even though it's early on, envisions dealing with things like uh, treaty settlements coming down the road where you have now new government-to-government -government relationships being developed, different uh, focuses from the government's perspective, the First Nation government perspective, and uh, potential different uh, <coughs> jurisdictional issues coming out of that. So is the plan going to be able to adjust to accommodate that? Great question. Anybody want to tackle that? I, th I think, again, from the federal perspective, uh, we recognize there's a separate uh, treaty-making process of which some First Nations are involved and others are not. And we recognize that um, uh, if that process produces treaties, uh, the outcomes from those treaties uh, would have to be factored into whatever planning uh, results we produce in Pensima. They would, it would have to be respectful of whatever those outcomes were. And so I think from, from our perspective, my short answer is, is that we would be uh, taking into consideration the results of any treaty deliberations that produce some sort of conclusion that was supported by the governments uh, and First Nations. Yeah, Wayne, uh, thanks for your question. Um, Coastal First Nations, when we first came together, uh, every one of us were involved in treaty negotiations, and I think most of us probably still are. Uh, what we had in common was the lack of progress uh, at those treaty tables. And it was our decision that we were no longer going to wait around to breathe life into our rights or our title through a negotiating process with a bunch of people that had no mandates to resolve anything. We decided to breathe that life into it ourselves. And that's where land use planning uh, was born for Coastal First Nations. And that's why we're involved in, in marine use planning. Because we know that that's the place that we have to get things done on the ground. And we can't wait around for some belabored process that has no mandate to finish anything. So I wouldn't hold my breath waiting uh, and trying to design this for the outcomes of some treaty process because I haven't seen that on the ground. Uh, I, don't say, I don't say this lightly. I spent a decade as a treaty negotiator. I was one of the founding commissioners on the BC Treaty Commission. So I, I have a bit of experience in that, and my lack of optimism is, is directly related to my experience in that process. Thanks, sir. We really don't have time for one more question, but let's do it anyhow. Table 18. Hang on a second. We got a microphone for you. Yeah, my name's Chris Cook, and I'm from Alert Bay, and Numbris, and I see Paul Sprout got his hand down and his head down, because he knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> he talked to me in front of him next to the Minister of Indian Affairs, and he said, "Give me a call anytime. I will return your call. I like to call you a liar." I phoned you, and I phoned you, and I phoned you. And you never returned one of my calls. I told your people from the uh, department to tell you to give me a call because you hadn't returned my call. Chris, I have a feeling you have okay, a question. Okay, just hold it a minute. Hold it a minute. That's the rule. Question. Oh, just hold it. A question. The question was, why didn't you call me? Mm. And then I got another question. I see in here you're talking about, oh, maybe when all the, all the First Nations that are sitting in here have been to hundreds of meetings at the same time. I see the young fellow about uh, next to, who is he? Right down on the end there, talking about your people, our people, the First Nations, have enjoyed a living from the sea for centuries. I'm from the Kwakwaka'wakw tribal group of the Numbers. At one time in our village, we had 57 boats just from our family and about 96 boats that were sane boats and 250 gallons. Today, we have two sane boats. I have uh, 800 in my family, the Cook family. There's only four of us fishing now. I, I addressed my letter. My, my br brother up there says, you know, it's all about the 
knows all about the treaty, I don't think it's for him to say anything about the treaty. There's a lot of us that are doing it. And I like to say to Paul Sprout and the fisheries, Department of Fisheries and Oceans, how can, you, how can you cut away my livelihood and my people's livelihood of the Kwakwaka'wakw people, the people from Guilford Island, Guilford Island, New Vancouver, Kinkum, Village Island, Fort Rupert, all okay. the different tribal groups. We have to, we have okay, to respond to the question and move on. Okay, how could you just cut on. that off? So the questions are two things. Okay, sir, I'm not sure your name, but I like to, I like to say, maybe they turned the mic off, but... Uh, it goes on and off. I like to say, how do you bring that back? How do you buy licenses from the industry right here and give them to the river and both sides of the river of the coastal people and take our opportunities away to fish? Chris, we're going to have to respond we, we to some the of those first nation, questions. We the First Nations on the coast did not uh, wipe out the stocks and ruin the habitat. But we're paying for 100% of the return of that fish. Thanks, Chris. You know, that makes me angry and our people angry. And you people up there sitting up there... Chris. Look at all the different organizations, the Native Brotherhood, all the different organizations. We all belong to it. Now you got another organization. Are you going to listen to them people and not listen to the rest of the coast? Let's okay, let's have a chance you. to respond to some I of the points you're making. Time you listen. I don't know who'd like to respond to that, but but if you can do it in a timely way, I'd appreciate I, it. I, I would. Chris, you may you, you may have forgotten. I actually did return your call, but I commit today to to call you once again, and we can continue our conversation. Well, you did not answer. You did not phone me. I would have known if you phoned me. But you guys, you guys can take us up another time but between the th two. This of is you. something we can discuss in my my next call, Chris. Right. Chris, I don't think the issue that we have is whether I call you or don't call you, whether you recall it or I, or, or I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is what you ended on. And the issue that you ended on is that First Nations, your community particularly, is frustrated with the current status of the fisheries. The reality is that we don't have the salmon today that we harvested in the past. We don't. The issue is, is where do we go from here? This is the future that we're trying to talk about. The past, we all agree, we want to change. We want to move toward the future. So the issues that we have in front of us today and tomorrow are what could that future look like when it comes to the oceans? And you and I will need to talk about what that is because I value your opinions. So we will exchange our views. And just before the break, I, I, wanted, I want to appreciate what Chris is, is saying. There are historical disagreements in this room that go back a long time. There are specific ones and there are general ones. And, uh, and I appreciate you raising those, even though it's, it's cumbersome to do that, and it's difficult to be particular in the way you have been. It's difficult to, to answer those. Thank you, for your, uh, what time you dealt with the too. Thank you, Chris. Let's take a break, which I think you've earned, and we want to be back in this room at 11 o'clock. So you have uh, 25 minutes, and I would ask Rick and John to be here at 11. Thanks. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs>